Hi everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to configure the iSCSI initiator in vSphere so that it will connect to iSCSI target that was created on Windows Server in another lab. You can see that I already have a session open in the vCenter. I'm going to select my ESXi01 host. We will click on storage adapters and I'm going to add a software adapter. This is going to be our iSCSI software adapter. Click OK and we'll wait for that to finish and the adapter will be added. Okay, that's done. Now what we need to do is configure the adapter. So I'll select my iSCSI adapter up here at the top and there are a few different things that we need to do here. The first one is we're gonna change the name. So I'm gonna click on edit beside general and what I'm gonna do is delete everything after ESXi01, so the dash and that random number that VMware creates. Now, if you think about it, this exactly matches the iSCSI initiator information that we put into Windows to configure the iSCSI target. So it's incredibly important, once again, that this information and what was entered into Windows is exactly the same in order for the connection to take place. Click OK for that. Next thing that we need to do is we need to bind the adapter to a network port. Click on the network port binding tab. We're going to add an adapter and we're going to pick the storage adapter and say OK. And that's really all we need to do for that. So we can see now that we have one adapter. You can have more than one, but we have one in this case. And there's also a warning that we need to uh, rescan. We're not going to rescan now because we haven't finished putting all of the information we need in to be able to see the iSCSI targets. The next thing that we need to do is specify how do we discover what targets are out there. And most of the time what you do is use dynamic discovery and limit what targets are visible to what consumers on the target side. You can also do static if you want to punch in exactly what those targets are going to be, but it's far easier to use dynamic. In this case, we're going to add and we're going to put in the IP address of our uh, Windows machine that we set up the iSCSI targets. So that's the IP that I put on that other network adapter that we're using for storage over on the Windows side. Port 3260 is standard, so we'll take that. I'll click on OK. And now that that's done, we do need to rescan. All right, and once you rescan and that's completed, assuming that all has gone well, you should see some targets and devices light up over here on the right hand side. We can look at devices, we can look at paths. Uh, the key thing that I want to point out here when we did those manual LUN ID configurations over on the Windows side, those show up here as LUN 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that's why that's kind of important. It just makes it a lot easier to identify what's going on rather than the uh, IQN target names, uh, the runtime names, which are never going to be consistent anyway, or if we look at devices, same sort of thing. If we look at the NAA IDs, very difficult for us to try and recognize what's going on. So um, hence, having those LUN numbers is important. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.